All right, here's our problem set. Let's take a look at the first problems. Draw a tape diagram to match each number sentence, then complete the number sentence. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in on A here, one A. So this is three plus one third, right? This answer, I'm just gonna write it out because it's common sense, it's just the answer is three and one third, all right? If I have three cookies and a third of a cookie, if I put them all together, I have three cookies and a third of a cookie, right? It just comes out to be that way. And I'll show you what it looks like through a visual model. Our cookies are gonna be rectangular. There's one cookie, there's two cookies, there's three cookies, okay? Now I need to make a fourth cookie, right? And this fourth cookie is gonna be split into thirds. Okay, see that? I'm gonna split that into thirds. And I'm gonna just shade in one of those thirds, okay? So here I've got one cookie, two cookies, three cookies, and then a third of a cookie. All right, see how this cookie and this is, these two aren't there? That's a third of a cookie. If I add those up, I end up with one, two, three, and a third. All right, see how that works? So it's just basically put them together of three and a third, okay? Over here, it's four plus three fourths. It's the same exact concept. I have four whole cookies. I use cookies because I like cookies. And three fourths of a cookie. And what does that look like? Well, here's a cookie, there's one cookie, here's a cookie, two cookies, here's another cookie, right? Three cookies, and here's another cookie, four cookies. So there are my four cookies, but I need to add three fourths of a cookie. So I'm gonna draw another one, a fifth one, same exact size, I'm gonna cut this one into fourths, okay? And I'm gonna shade in just three of those fourths. So if I add those together, I'd get one, two, three, four, and three fourths. Turns out to be a mixed number like that, okay? See how that works? All right. Now, for subtraction, it's a little bit different, okay? So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna take a look at C. C shows me a fraction uh, like this, all right? So I've got three minus a fourth. So what I'm gonna do is draw three cookies, okay? Draw out my three cookies just like that. Okay, so if I have three cookies and I'm subtracting just one-fourth of one cookie, I'm going to take this last cookie that I drew and split that into fourths, okay? And all I'm going to do is take away this one piece, one-fourth, okay? I'm going to take away one-fourth. So how much does that end, end, do I end up with? One, two whole cookies, and three-fourths of a cookie. See how that works? I end up with two cookies and three, two and three fourths cookie. Because all I did was take away one fourth of that third cookie. Does that make sense? Yeah, I kind of shade them in a little bit different here too. All right, let's take a look at this one. It's the same exact concept. I've got five cookies and I'm taking two fifths from one of them, okay? So I'm gonna draw five cookies. One, two, and try to wanna make this, the uh, rectangles or the shapes that you're drawing around the same size, because it just, all the cookies need to be the same size. There's my five cookies. Now I'm taking away two fifths. So I'm gonna take my last cookie here, and I'm gonna split that into fifths by cutting it four times. There. Then I'm subtracting two of those. Two of those fifths, okay? So these, that is two fifths I just took away. So now how many cookies do I have? I have one, two, three, four full cookies, and how many left? One, two, three fifths. See how that works? It's pretty cool, right? Okay, let's take a look at two. Let me zoom out a little bit. It says use the following three numbers to write two subtraction and two addition number sentences. Okay, so basically what this is asking us to do is write related facts or fact families if you've seen that before, okay? So we have six, six and three eighths, and three eighths. Okay, so let's do our addition sentences first because to me, that makes the most sense. So I'm gonna use six plus three eighths is equal to six and three eighths. See how I used all three of those numbers? Now what I'm gonna do is just flip flop these two because addition has a commutative property. So I'm gonna say three eighths plus six is equal to six and three eighths. Okay, now I need to do my subtraction. 
So I'm going to start with my biggest numbers right here. These are always going to start with those. 6 and 3 eighths. I'm going to subtract. I can subtract 6 or 3 eighths. Let's just subtract the 6 holes and I'm going to end up with 3 eighths. And then finally, my biggest number, 6 and 3 eighths. I subtract the 3 eighths this time and I end up with 6. Okay, fact families. You can try to do the same thing with this one too. All right. If you want to work with me, great. Teachers want to pause here and kind of, you know, work your way through it. Be my guest. But I see four sevenths, nine, eight, and three sevenths. So I'm going to start with addition first. My biggest number is nine here, all right, out of all three of those. So that's going to be my answer here. So I'm going to start with four sevenths plus eight and three sevenths. That equals nine. See how four sevenths plus three sevenths is going to give me one? One plus eight equals nine. Now I flip flop these two, eight and three sevenths plus four sevenths is equal to nine. Now my subtraction problems both have, have all of them have to start with the highest number that I have is nine. So this is gonna be nine subtracted by four sevenths is equal to eight and three sevenths. And then nine minus eight and three sevenths is equal to four sevenths, okay? Feel free to pause so you can catch up and take a look at that. Um, it's the same exact thing though, kids. If I were doing something like this, if I was just doing the numbers one, two, and three, right? I would say one plus two equals three, two plus one equals three. Then I'd flip flop it. I'd say three minus one equals two, and three minus two equals one. See how these are related facts? Okay, these are also related facts. We're just using with mixed numbers, fractions, and whole numbers. That's all we're doing, okay? Okay. All right, let's take a look at the, the last part of this problem down here, okay? It says, solve using a number bond. Draw a number line to represent each number sentence. The first one has been done for us, okay? So here it says um, 4 minus 1 third. So what we did, see how they did this? They said, all right, they made three and three thirds. See how that's still equal to four because three thirds is one. All right, let me zoom in on that real quick so you can see that a little bit better. So then what they did was take one third from this three thirds end up with two thirds. So it ends up with three and two thirds. And there's that number line right there. The number line was in between three and four. Let me, let me show, try to walk you through this one, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take my five and I'm gonna split that into four holes, all right, because I'm doing five minus two thirds. And over here, I'm gonna make three thirds, okay? So basically what I did was take one of, uh, out of my fives, one of my holes, and made three thirds out of it. So I have four and three thirds, which is still equal to five, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is subtract two thirds, okay? So I'm basically doing this, I'm doing three-thirds minus two-thirds. And that is going to equal four and one-third. See how that works? So my answer up here is four and one-third. Now the number line is going to look like this. I'm going to draw my little number line here, okay? A happy little number line. That was for Mrs. Glenn. Put my starting and ending point. Okay. So my ending point, my highest number is five. So that's what my five is going to be here. And I'm gonna go one full one below, which is four. So I'm between four and five. Then I'm gonna split this into thirds, okay? So this is four and one third, and four and two thirds. Okay, so four, four and one third, four and two thirds, five, okay? Now I'm taking away a third. I'm taking away two thirds, all right? So I have five and I'm subtracting two thirds. Right? So subtract that two thirds. It ends up in four and a third. See how that works? So I subtract a third here and a third there. Okay? All right, let's check out the back. Let me zoom out here, kind of way up close. Complete the subtraction sentences using number bonds. Okay. So I like the number bonds better than drawing out the entire picture. So we're gonna keep doing that. So actually we're up here, there, okay. All right, 
we're gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna do number bonds this whole way through. All right, this is all subtraction. Okay, so here I've got seven, actually six. What's my unit? It's eighths, right? So I'm gonna make one of my holes and make eight eighths. Now what I'm gonna do is subtract eight eighths. I need it to do eight eighths minus three eighths. And I can do that. What's eight minus three? It's five eighths. And then I just end up with six, six and five eighths. Okay? How about 10 minus four tenths? Let's take our 10, make nine, and now one of the holes will make into 10 tenths. Okay? Now I'm gonna, I'll draw this one a little bit different so you can see it. Now I can take this four tenths and subtract it from 10 tenths. Right, so I took one of my holes from the 10 and made 10 tenths. Because if the numerator and the denominator are the same, I have one still, okay? So now I'm gonna end up with nine, four minus, 10 minus four is six tenths. So I end up with nine and six tenths there, okay? And we're gonna continue doing that the whole way down. So teachers, if you wanna pause this and have the kids do it on their own and then come back and check, it's up to you. All right, here I've got three. All right, so I'm gonna take one of my holes and make it into 10 tenths, because that's, um, that's my unit, tenths. Now what I'm gonna do is subtract the 1 tenth from that 10 tenths. So I'm gonna end up with two holes and 9 tenths. See how that works? 10 minus 1 is 9, and the units remain the same. Let's check out this one. Split that. I'm gonna take one of my holes and make it into four fourths. And then I'm gonna end up with four there, okay? So now I subtract three fourths from four fourths. Four minus three is one fourth. So I have four and one fourth. So five holes minus three fourths end up with four and a fourth. Pretty cool. It's kind of fun once you get it. So six minus five eighths. Okay, I take my six take one of my holes and make it into 8 eighths. All right, so I'm up to 5 8 eighths. I'm going to subtract 5 eighths from 8 eighths, end up with 3 eighths. All right, so it's 5 and 3 eighths. So there's a 7. 7 holes minus 3 ninths. Okay, so I make this into a 6 and 9 ninths. And I'm doing 9 ninths here because that's my unit, is ninths and nine of them would be the whole thing. So six and nine ninths is still seven. We're just broken up a little bit different. So I subtract my three ninths, end up with six ninths here, and six holes, so six and six ninths. Great. And the last row, eight minus six tenths. So eight can be split into seven holes and 10 tenths, okay? So I'll subtract that six tenths end up with seven and four tenths. And look at this one, 29. I think that's gonna scare us, not gonna scare us. All right, what's one less than 29 is 28. So I take that one and I split it into 12 twelfths. And then I subtract that nine twelfths from it. I end up with 28 and three twelfths, okay? All right, kids, good job. Uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's all of our work for today, all right? Hopefully, you can take a look back at your work and you feel pride and that it makes some sense to you, all right? There it is. Fact family for using fractions looks confusing, but once you understand the premise of it, you're okay with it. All right, guys, nice job. Tomorrow, um, there's no math tomorrow, but on Wednesday, we'll continue along with the same track. All right, have a great day.